Welcome to the last topic for the mixtures in solutions unit, which is energies in reactions. Your first learning objective for this section is to identify a reaction as either exothermic or endothermic, given the relevant information. So the science understanding for this section is all chemical reactions involve the formation of a new substance and are accompanied by either a gain in energy, which is an endothermic reaction, or a loss of energy, which is an exothermic reaction. So just a bit of background and some new terminology. In any chemical process, you have reactants which form products. You are familiar with these. Now, reactants and products are called the system. Energy is stored in the reactants and the products, and this stored chemical en energy, or the heat content of the system, is referred to as enthalpy. And we use the capital letter H to signify enthalpy. Now, enthalpy is the measure of the internal energy within a system. Now, the total energy within a system must remain unchanged, so the delta H must equal zero. However, the energy within a system can be transformed during the formation or the breaking of bonds between the reactants and the products. And this is referred to as enthalpy change, which is that delta H. Enthalpy changes are measured in joules or kilojoules per mole. So now we classify a reaction as either endothermic or exothermic. In an endothermic reaction, energy is added or absorbed from the surroundings to break the chemical bonds in the reactions. Now, the surroundings can be the water, if the reaction took place in the water, it can be the air or even the reaction vessel. Here is an example of an endothermic reaction. We have nitric oxide, which reacts with oxygen to give you nitrogen dioxide. So the reactants, measure 1708 kilojoules per mole and the product products produce 1616 kilojoules per mole you put that into your equation so your reactants value minus your products value so 1708 minus 1616 gives you a positive value of 92 kilojoules per mole and as the net energy is positive the reaction is endothermic in an exothermic reaction, energy is released into the surroundings as new chemical bonds are formed in the products. Here's an, an example of an exothermic reaction. We have hydrogen reacts with chlorine to give you hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. So 672 kilojoules of energy is required to break those bonds for hydrogen and chlorine and 856 kilojoules per mole of energy is released into the surroundings when those new bonds form in the products. So to work out the enthalpy change, it's the reactants minus the products, so 672 minus 856, and that gives us a value of negative 184 kilojoules per mole. And as the net energy is negative, this reaction is exothermic. Okay, so the next learning objectives for this section is to explain how energy is required for disassociation of ions and how energy is released by the hydration of ions. You'll also learn how to write a thermochemical equations for dissolving ionic substances in water. The science understanding is very much the same. So energy changes in endothermic or exothermic reactions can be explained in terms of the law of conservation of energy and the breaking and forming of bonds. When ionic substances dissolve in water, the disassociation of the ions requires energy and the hydration of the ions release energy. So as I explained with your learning objectives, you'll learn how to explain the endothermic or exothermic nature of dissolving ionic substances in terms of the law of conservation of energy and the energy required for disassociation of ions and the energy release by hydration of the ions and writing thermochemical equations for dissolving ionic substances in water. So first, the law of conservation of energy. 
Now, as you know, energy cannot be created or destroyed. So energy is conserved in any chemical process. And we uh, represent this as the delta H, so H being enthalpy, so delta H equals zero. The total energy of the system before the reaction is equal to the total energy of a system at the end of the reaction. Now we'll look at how energy is involved in dissolving ionic substances. We'll be using the terms dissociation and hydration, which you should be familiar with. So stage one is dissociation, and this is where the ionic bonds break between the anions and the cations. In order for that to occur, energy is absorbed from the surroundings um, to assist and make those bonds break, which means that dissociation is an endothermic reaction. In stage two, hydration, the opposite occurs. So those free anions and cations are hydrated and energy is released when the iron dipole forces form between the water molecules and the free anions. So as energy is released, it is an exothermic reaction. Now we'll look at how you would write that out as an equation. So like all the other equations that we've had you write out and balance, this is exactly the same. So first you write out what your reactants are and what your products will be. You then need to determine the mole ratio. So you need to balance your equation. You also need to include and determine the state that each of your reactants and products are in. So whether it's an aqueous solution, solid or a gas. And then you add the quantity of heat energy absorbed or released. And this will give you an indication whether it is an exothermic or endothermic reaction. Let's look at an example. During the synthesis of water, we have hydrogen and oxygen, which combine and release 286 kilojoules of energy. How you would write out that equation. So first you need to write out your reactants, so hydrogen and oxygen, and what your products are. In this case, it's a water molecule, H2O. You need to add in your mole ratio, so you need to balance that equation. You also need to determine the state of which each of your reactants and products are in. So we have gas, gas, and liquid, and we only write liquid for water. Every other uh, liquid solution would be aqueous. So then you add in your enthalpy change, which is that delta H and the value of the energy change. In this case, it's negative 286 kilojoules per mole. So that being a negative, it is an exothermic reaction. Energy was released into the surroundings. Here is a second example. We're going to look at how methane is used as a fuel to heat water. And the change in enthalpy of methane is negative 890 kilojoules per mole. Automatically, I see that it's negative 890, that means energy was released, and that it's an exothermic reaction. So first of all, you write out what your reactants are, which is methane reacts with oxygen, which gives you your products, which is carbon dioxide and water. You determine the states of each of your reactants and your products, so we have gas, gas, gas and a liquid and then you need to add in your quantity of heat or energy so in this case it's a delta h and negative 890 kilojoules per mole now we're going to apply that to writing out thermochemical equations for dissolving an ionic substance in a solution so the change of energy that occurs when an ionic compound is dissolved is called enthalpy of solution. And we represent that using this equation. So to determine the enthalpy of solution, we calculate the amount of energy that is required for the disassociation of the lattice and the amount of energy released during hydration. We're going to look at an, an example of this, dissolving lithium chloride in water. So the energy absorbed from the surroundings during the lattice dissociation was 846 kilojoules per mole. 
the amount of energy that was released during hydration was 883 kilojoules per mole. We add those into our equation, so our lattice dissociation plus the amount of energy released during hydration. So 846 plus negative 883, and that is a negative value because energy was released. So that gives us a value of negative 37 kilojoules per mole. The, <laughs> the enthalpy of solution is negative, indicating a net release of energy. So the last thing we then do is write out that equation. So we have our reactant, lithium chloride, and our products, lithium and chlorine. Then you need to work out your mole ratios. So we have our products, which is a lithium cation and our chlorine anion. And then we determine the state of each of our reactants and products. So we have solid, aqueous, aqueous. As long as it's balanced, we're all good. We just add in the enthalpy of solution value, which we had on the previous slide. So then that is enthalpy of solution, which equals negative 37 kilojoules per mole. And as it is a negative value, it's an exothermic reaction. We'll be looking at more of these thermochemical equations in class, and we'll um, clarify some questions that you might have regarding the thermochemical equations. Beautiful, thanks.